Now, last week, we brought you news of a shocking report that found that the number of migrants the European Union had more than doubled in just five years. And today, it's emerged that there were more than one million asylum applicants in the European Union last year alone. Now, the figure was 631,000 in 2019. And although it fell over the next two years due to COVID, of course, it hit almost 1.05 million in 2023. Now, that's a rise, a shocking rise of 66%. And I'm now joined by Lee Evans, who's the chairman of facts for eu.org Lee, are you there? Lee isn't there. Right, we've got a few technical grammars here. I'm going to talk you through some of this data until we can get Lee Evans up. So, like I say, last week we brought you the report. 1.265 million illegal immigrants to all of the 27 EU member states when you add them up. That's just the illegal immigration. This is European Commission data that's released at the end of each year. Lee Evans crunched that data, and this shows the truly astonishing nature, the true size of illegal immigration to the European Union. Last week, Lee Evans and myself concluded if the European Union cannot control its own borders, if they're so porous to illegal migrants, what chance do they ever have of stopping that that mass of people inexorably moving towards the French coast. Well, today's report is the numbers of asylum applicants, first-time applicants, so fresh arrivals to the European Union. Lee Evans, I believe, is now with us to talk it through. Lee, are you there? Lee Evans is there. Lee Evans, the chairman of facts for eu.org Mercifully, we get you on. So the second report in two weeks, Lee, casting a, a harsh, harsh light over the numbers piling into the European Union. I went over the illegal migration figures a short while ago. Today's report, published by yourself, is the number of first-time asylum seekers. Talk through the shocking numbers and talk us, Lee Evans, through the growth. Yeah, um, well, it seems not to matter where you look in uh, the migration statistics in the EU, and I'll come on to why that's important to uh, to your audience in a moment. But no matter where you look, the numbers are just shocking. Uh, so I assume you've, you've mentioned the fact that uh, the numbers of illegal migrants into the EU in the last five years doubled. Um, 1.25 million just in the last year alone. Uh, which is an extraordinary number of, of people. When it comes to asylum, which is what we looked at in our report today, and, and it's a great team effort that's been punching these numbers because the EU Commission doesn't make it easy. Um, but anyway, the numbers are uh, 3.5 million in five years. And those numbers that show a 66% growth in, in those five years. Uh, so you, whether it's illegals that are avoiding the asylum system or whether it's people that are being forced to enter the asylum system, vast numbers uh, are backing up uh, in Europe. And, of course, we all know you're showing a picture there at the moment of uh, uh, a boat taking illegal mi migrants across to the UK. The more uh, migrants there are in Europe the greater the pressure there will be on the southern borders of the United Kingdom. And if you look at the latest figures, uh, we, are, we are looking at the worst set of figures uh, since this whole thing began in 2018. And I can give you one extra fact, Martin, that you, might, you and your audience might find interesting. Uh, everyone knows that numbers are increasing. What people may not know is that on Saturday, two days ago, we broke the 130,000 mark, 130,000 mark for these illegal migrants coming to the UK since this problem began. And these are undocumented people. Uh, we don't know who they are. We know that the vast majority of them are male. Uh, but we, we have no idea of their background, their history, the, even their names or, or nationalities, because they throw all of those overboard. So, and, and one of the Lee, points... um, if, if, I, if I may interject, 
Um, another, key fig another key figure that leaps out of your excellent report is those who are still in the system, backed up, awaiting processing. Now, that's an additional 1.17 million who are awaiting their claims. You add all these numbers together, you're at the thick end of 5 million, Lee Evans. And my next question to you is quite simple. If they're in the system in the European Union, if they're being processed or they're trying to apply for asylum in the European Union, why is that a problem for Britain? I mean, if they're going to stay in the EU, isn't that, you know, that's where they want to be? That's fine. Or am I being naive? Are they still claiming asylum in the EU, but then still making their way towards the French coast? That's, that's it. Um, the problem that we have is that uh, the UK is a major draw for many of these uh, migrants. Uh, if you ask any group where they want to settle, there are two answers, generally. Germany and the UK. And so we are one of the draws for, for these migrants. If they get denied uh, asylum, which, by the way, most of them do, and we're producing uh, our final report, which will include uh, that information of rejections and just how many of these are being deported. And I've had a, a, a sneak look at the numbers, and I can tell you, you're going to be shocked about that one too, Martin. So uh, it doesn't matter whether uh, these people are forced to apply for asylum in, in the EU or not, which is the subject of our report today. That doesn't matter because they can still up sticks and head for the northern French coast. Um, and the key thing is just the sheer volumes as such that when you look at Keir Starman's plans, uh, he's, his latest plan la last week, as you know, was to effectively bypass the EU and give £84 million pounds of taxpayers' money to mm. Africa and the Middle East in some hope that by doing that, migrants wouldn't leave there. But where are they leaving there for? They're leaving there for the EU. So it's the EU's responsibility to deal with that. Not, no, we shouldn't be paying for it. Uh, so they're coming to the EU, and then a proportion of those, a significant proportion and a growing proportion, are coming to the UK. And the ones that are coming to the I, I, need, hmm. I need to interject again. You, you make you know, valid points. All of this, by the way, is the European Commission's own data. This is their own official data. This isn't cooked out of nowhere. This is the data that they published. This, this data came out on Friday, and you've processed it over the weekend. This is just the truth. This is their own data. I want to ask you a simple question. You say there that two countries stand out above all others as the magnetic draw, Germany and the United Kingdom. What is it, Lee, about those two countries? What do they have in common that makes them so attractive? And let's mainly focus on the, on the United Kingdom. What is it about the UK that is so attractive to these asylum seekers and illegal immigrants? It is the fact that, uh, frankly, we treat them better than pretty much any other country does. Uh, they come over, they get, um, they've thrown their, uh, their iPhones into the water on the way over. They get a new iPhone. Uh, they're paid uh, a, a, a cash amount every week. Uh, they get food. Uh, they get um, uh, lodging. Uh, and they're not forced to work. Uh, and they get put up in, in four-star hotels. So what's not to like? And Lee, have you heard anything? I know it's very early days. Let's, let's give credit where it's due. It's very early days into the Labour government, into Sir Keir Starmer's stewardship, prime ministership of the country. But have you heard anything yet from the Labour Party which you think might deter people making this perilous journey, which might deter that mag magnetic pull to the United Kingdom? Or actually, has something else happened by scrapping Rwanda, by getting rid of that deterrent, that offshore Deterrent. Do you think actually the United Kingdom might be more appealing now than it was even a couple of weeks ago? Uh, I, I think it most certainly is more appealing now than it was uh, two weeks ago. Um, was it 17 days he's been in office now, something like that? Um, and uh, almost his first act was to scrap Rwanda. Uh, now, up until that point, uh, as you know, uh, a lot of migrants were in fact travelling from the UK to the Republic of Ireland because they were worried about being deported to Rwanda. And you've reported, GB News has reported, the 
uh, the the protests that are going on in Ireland now about all these migrants and where they're going to be situated. So there was an immediate effect of what you might call a, a Rwanda deterrent. Sadly, it affected our neighbours in, in the Republic of Ireland. But nevertheless, it shows the power of, of these sorts of things. Now, that's scrapped. And there are now no targets. Uh, the Labour government refuses to put any figures on, on any potential reductions. All we've done, um, because we're non-partisan, we're not anti-Labour, all we've done is in these set of reports, we've shown the extent of the problem. And you've kindly highlighted that, you know, doubling of the number of the illegal migrants entering the EU in the last five years, 66% increase in asylum seekers uh, in the EU in that time, uh, more than a million backed up in the system in the EU, uh, waiting on decisions. And as we will show in our, in our final report on this, looking at how many are rejected and how many are deported, I'm afraid, Martin, uh, like you as I do, I'm going to have even worse news for you. OK, well, I mean, again, you know, it's news that we have to share no matter how unpleasant because we have to keep highlighting this issue. Otherwise, I fear it would never, ever change. Lee Evans, thanks for bearing with us. We had a few issues there, but thanks for coming on the show as always. And let's get you on again for that final part of that report, even though it may be grim reading. Lee Evans is the chairman of facts for eu.org. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show.